Ready? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. What you guys camping out here for? Man, for the diamonds, man. Hell yeah. Shoe dunking. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So what's your favorite part about the shoe, big dog? Big ass diamond on the tongue. To me, it's like the Concord Jordan of SB Nikes. When people would see me wearing these, they were like, whoa, what are those? It was a real moment in sneaker culture. It's still probably, for me, one of the top five colorways on the shoe. People that didn't even know anything about it and just wanted it because it looked so good. It was like being a drug dealer in the 80s. The lines would not stop. Even Nicky might say that it was kind of the last cosign that he needed before the brand just took off. It was kind of a fluke that it, I ended up getting my own dunk. In 2004, when I was at Girl Skateboards, Sam Smythe, who was the team manager of Girl, came into my office and he said, hey man, Nike wants to do a Girl Skateboards team manager series collaboration shoe. Can you help me with some colorways? So I'm like doing all Bay Area sports teams and random colors that I thought would look dope. And I was like, here, let's design one, but do a silver swoosh blue colorway because I made a shirt like that before that everyone really liked. So we sent them over to Nike. There's a lot of different colorways on there. Yeah. And without any like, this is our favorite or anything like that, you guys came back with like, oh, we want to do this one. When they sent back the first sample and I was like, man, it looks kind of boring. We can make this way sicker. Sam was like, well, why don't we just make that a diamond one? Well, I actually told Sam, tell him that we want to make that the diamond one. And I was like, see what they say. At the same time, Nick's trying to run away with my project. <laughs> I am t realizing I can't do the project. So Sam was like, hey man, I don't know if Rick and Mike, who own Girl Skateboards, are going to be that hyped on doing a Nike shoe because they own their own shoe company called Lakai. Yeah. So I was like, well, dude, give it to Nick. I think you're like, let me check. And then you're like, yeah, it's good. I'm like, do what you want, Nick. So I was like, let's just go crazy and do crocodile, a platinum looking swoosh, and then throw the diamond on the tongue. Now it looks like it'd be like chilling in a jewelry store. He brought me this CAD when I was at work one day, and I was the first person that he showed it to. So, you know, when he brought it to me, I was like, holy shit, this is going to change your life. Everybody referenced it as the Tiffany dunk, I think, because of the color reference, but you know, when he presented it to me, it was always the diamond dunk. It was just such a smart idea, and it made sense with his brand. When we send out promo pairs to, of anything that we work on, we definitely tell, don't post anything, don't sell it. I remember the infamous MySpace photo. Um, you want to tell me a little bit about that? There was no like marketing plan or anything. I was like, I got this shoe. I think it's dope. I'm going to post it on MySpace. And that was all I was thinking. There was this immediate crazy hype over the shoe. There was like thousands of comments within like a couple hours. What was the reaction from people at Nike? Oh yeah, it was everybody coming to me saying, what the hell is going on? Why did he post it? What, like this is not coming out for almost a year. Uh, can you tell him to take it down? Funny thing is that that's exactly marketing 101 as it is today. Oh, first person, yo. How long you been waiting for? 6 p.m., man. Just gotta take a picture of this shit. I know, look at this line, son. Stay fresh. When the diamond dunks dropped, nobody was picking up the phone to the skate shop. You had to go there, Figure out how you're gonna get to the top of the line and hope they have your size. That, my friends, is really a sneakerhead. It ain't nobody that's just getting an alert to their phone and refreshing the pit. Nah, we was in the line. Or we was paying somebody to be in the line. Nick, come here. Some dude is over Dan, a, a bill to cut the line. Brooklyn Projects, Diamond Supply Co. Collaboration, 50 shirts, hand number by Mr. Happiness. So Nike did have a lot of success with shoes prior to that. The Heineken Dunk, the Reese, the Bison. But the, the Diamond Dunk blew up. That was the first time we had a lineup, was for that shoe. The sneakerhead movement, the revolution, the, the, the community was starting to evolve. And that's why it had the impact it did. That's why we did a t-shirt. That's why from that day on, there was, for the most part, lineups every time for a Nike SB you know, for a long time. This thing's a little stuck. 
the motor on this one broke. I got these from Nick, but at the time I was riding for, for S. So he was like, hey, if I give them, are you gonna wear them? I think I was probably being a smart ass going like, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll wear them, dude. I'll just cut the swoosh off them and just rock them like that. You know, make them, try to make them look generic. But uh, I never did, obviously. Well, I think it was a shoe that was really stylish. These were all elements that we didn't see on a sneaker before that. And to see it on a skate shoe was, was totally different. This was a bit of a shift in the culture, showing that the skate crowd was very familiar with luxury and high-end type of stuff. And to have a shoe that had like croc skin on it, that was a big get for the sneakerheads. And then it's designed by a skater. So the skate community doesn't feel compromised. And then, you know, for street styles, it had a fresh colorway, it looked good on feet. So it was really a trifecta and it was a major come up for people that like sneakers. It used to be skateboarding was influenced by a lot of these other cultures and we would apply that to what we do. And now it was going in reverse. Like I remember hearing like a lot of times like NFL or NBA players would be calling SB people to get a box. SB was the cool kid in the sandbox now. Nike SB in general, but that shoe in particular, gave kids an identity. You know, they, they really resonated with that colorway and that shoe and they went hard. So the legend of the Tiffany kid. That's one of the first things that comes to mind is that picture. All the old sneakerheads know about him because this photo popped up on all the forums. When I saw him on Nike Talk, I was like, dude, really? You're going hard. Nike Talk blogs were flaming that kid. I felt bad. He was matching. He looks normal now when I see the picture. He just looked a little wild for the time. Still to this day, nobody knows who he is or where he is. Does he still exist in this world of sneakers? Who knows? I don't know where he is. Tell me you guys found him. You know the this, photo. This one right here? That one. <laughs> Should we show this photo to the camera? Yeah, this, is, this was me looking like Grimace. Happy-go-lucky, skipping my way through the streetwear line. I thought shoes had character. So I always liked the concept of SB because they would tell a story and Nick was telling his story. And I was like, yo, that's a dope colorway, man. So at this time I was turning 16. I was in my awkward transition to like puberty, you know? So it's a funny look, but I thought I was fresh. That's still a fly color. I might wear that next week. Every year I do a birthday cake and I want to say it was like 2010 or 11. I was like, I think I'm gonna do a shoe cake. But at that time, everyone was doing like Jordans, like Jordan 11, Jordan 4s. And I'm like, I don't want to do another Jordan cake. My friend, his wife owns this bakery. She's like, yeah, we could, we could do it. I think we could play around with it. And it came out exactly like the dog. She even did the shoelaces exactly like how I have my shoelaces. They were like untied. And I was like, why do they look like, oh, because I gave her the shoe that was kind of untied. And I'm like, she could have at least tightened them up. I think the biggest factor in, in what makes that still one of the best shoes designed was the fact that it introduced an entirely new colorway to sneaker culture. After that dunk came out, every brand started doing it. I'm like, dude, ugh. Everybody just jumped on it. You know, we used it in primitive stuff. Nick painted his, all his cars that color. Even when they did the Nike skate park in downtown LA, in the warehouse, they painted the whole inside the diamond blue colorway. I mean, look at the, this is the shoe box now. Like, just for all the premiums and quick strikes, it's still like, I mean, look, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good color. The diamond joints really give me nostalgic. But I remember I got them a little late. And you know when you buy a joint like that a little late, that's when the resellers was reselling. I got a pair later. I wasn't even able to get one day one because they were sold out. They sold out faster than I thought they would. And, and you know, it still wasn't the most limited shoe at the time. That's what people don't realize. It wasn't as limited as a lot of the other releases. It was just so popular and limited enough that it was too tough to get. And it still kept those prices high. So I had to get mine aftermarket. This is a time where I'm starting to roll now, right? So I'm collecting, I'm selling, I'm getting it for celebrities and you know, people contacting me, they need it for their wife, their kid. It was insane. There's no other words that you can describe how that shoe just brought in everyone from all different demographics into sneakers and into Nike and into Nike SB and into those Nike SB dunks. That was, that was the moment. 
People come up to me all the time still and they're like, that made me a sneakerhead, that got me into sneakers, it changed my life. That shoe really had an effect on a lot of people. All worlds really collided with this shoe right here. It had the right colors, the right materials, the right look, the right feel. To expand and become more than just a skateboarding shoe. In my eyes, that's probably the moment that SB exploded into a whole other market that it hadn't yet hit. The Diamond Dunk really helped take Diamond to that next level. When that thing came out, it went nuts. That was a big one, you know? That, that time period it became a big boom. Gold rush. Diamond rush. <laughs> When the diamond dunks drop, you have to go there, figure out how you're going to get to the top of the line, and hope they have your size. First person, y'all. How long you been waiting for? 6 p.m., man. When that thing came out, it went nuts. Some dude is over Dan, a bill to cut the line. That's probably the moment that SB exploded into a whole other market that it hadn't yet hit. That shoe just brought in everyone from all different demographics into sneakers. You gotta stay fresh.